And come as often as you want or don't come at all. I won't expect a card at Christmas either way. Michael Jai White is an American actor, producer, director, and screenwriter, as well as a martial artist. His life story is a classic example of the American dream. He came to wealth and fame from a poor life in a criminal district. And we will talk about his path in this video. Michael Jai White how the first African-American superhero and action star lives. Michael Jai White was born on November 10, 1967 in Brooklyn, New York. He was raised by just his mother, who would constantly change jobs to feed the family. The poor neighborhood where they lived wasn't suitable for raising kids. By the age of six, the boy had already seen so many murders that he started considering death a normal part of life. Michael admitted that as a child, he developed a strong immunity to human pain and blood and gained a protective callousness. And perhaps this is what helped him survive. Action movies became an outlet for our hero. After watching the film King Boxer, he became interested in martial arts and began to learn them on his own at home. They had no money for sports clubs and a gym, so instead of dumbbells, Michael used milk bottles filled with water. When the boy turned seven, his mother was offered a position in Bridgeport, so the woman had to move with her son to the neighboring state of Connecticut. But even there, they lived in a poor neighborhood, ruled by the laws of the jungles on the streets. The Whites rented a small apartment next door to a bully named Troy Alves, who was always picking on Michael. However, the new neighbor wasn't a pushover and knew how to fight back. A strong friendship was born from fights, and their love for martial arts united them. Troy attended the jujitsu classes, a Japanese martial art, and was happy to show his friend the moves he'd learned. Michael also started attending Shotokan karate lessons and then switched to Kyokushin. In this style, the boy got his first black belt at 13. By the way, in adolescence, he already had impressive size. At 14, his weight was 190 pounds. At the same age, he left home and started living independently with a friend who was shot a month later. White was also shot in the arm and thigh. Michael kept the district in fear, as he was the leader of a teenage gang and was protected by a drug lord. Although he never got into fights first, he could show his fighting skills when the situation called for it. At 15, Michael, while still a child, became a father. His son, when he grew up, was involved with criminals and got hooked on illegal substances, which ruined his life. In 2021, White announced the death of his eldest child. Michael could have continued his criminal path, but he received a sports scholarship and entered a teacher training college. At that time, he began acting on the theater stage as a hobby and participated in martial arts competitions. After graduation, he became a special education teacher at a school for children with emotional disorders. Michael was on the list of the best teachers. He had a standardized schedule and a stable income, but to him, it was not enough. So he would go to various auditions on weekends and during the summer holidays, and also acted in plays. In particular, he received the main role in the production of To Kill a Mockingbird. Interestingly enough, while working at school, White had a negative opinion about hip-hop, which tore teenagers away from reality. In 1989, Michael Jai White got roles in two parts of the fantasy franchise The Toxic Avenger, and in 1990, he starred in a Burger King commercial. Eventually, after three years of work, he left teaching behind and moved to Los Angeles to devote himself entirely to making an acting career. In the early 1990s, Michael appeared in television series like Saved by the Bell and Renegade, as well as the films Universal Soldier and Full Contact. In 1994, the aspiring actor acted in the films On Deadly Ground and Lion Strike. 
as well as episodes in the TV series Living Single and Martin. And a year later, he had a lucky break. Michael was invited to play Iron Mike in the biographical television movie Dyson. After this role, the young man was showered with offers from directors, and in 1995, he appeared in the film Ballistic and episodes of the TV series NYPD Blue and JAG. Then came the thrillers Two Days in the Valley, City of Industry, but the actor's truly iconic film was Spawn based on the comic book by Todd McFarlane. The film was released in 1997, and Michael became the first black actor to play a superhero. To transform into his character, he spent up to four hours a day on makeup and suffered from a terribly uncomfortable costume. It was literally stuck to his body. The mask did not allow him to breathe normally, and the contact lenses irritated his eyes. The makeup artist's work was then rewarded with a Saturn Award nomination, and White was nominated for the Blockbuster Entertainment Awards. Due to special effects, the original budget of the film doubled, but the $40 million spent was paid off at the box office. The profit was almost $88 million. It's a little early for Halloween, Simmons. Where you're going, every day is Halloween. <laughs> Next, the actors starred in the crime thriller Thick as Thieves, the military drama Mutiny, the comedies Ringmaster, Breakfast of Champions, and in 1999, Universal Soldier The Return was released. In the first part, White played one of the soldiers, and in the sequel, he voiced a supercomputer named Seth. When I was a machine, I yearned to be a man. Now I'm better than both. At the beginning of the new millennium, Michael Jai White acted in the television drama Freedom Song, episodes of the TV series Wonderland, Boston Public, Soul Food, and CSI Miami, as well as the thriller Exit Wounds. In the latter, Michael's partner on the set was Steven Seagal, and their fight scene was a complete improvisation, not a predetermined choreography. After several mid-tier thrillers and voicing a character in Justice League, the actor got a cameo role in the movie Kill Bill Vol. 2. He even appeared in the trailer for Quentin Tarantino's project before it was split into two parts but his scene was never included in either the first or second chapter. In 2004, White began acting in the TV series Clubhouse and played in the fantasy action movie Silverhawk. Meanwhile, there were changes to his personal life as well. At the gym, he met Courtney Chapman, who worked as an OBGYN. Interestingly, the girl didn't even realize that her boyfriend was an actor. She only found out about it when one of her friends told her. Our hero said that for a long time, he resisted the feelings he felt for Courtney. But a year later, in 2005, she proposed to her beloved. And they immediately got married at the Four Seasons Hotel in Santa Barbara. Only their two best friends attended their wedding. But later, the couple organized another ceremony so that their families and other friends could also attend. Three years later, Courtney and Michael had a daughter, Morgan Michelle. The girl followed in her father's footsteps. She trained in karate and got the yellow belt at six. And in 2006, White acted in the romantic comedy Getting Played, an episode of the TV series Windfall, and the sports action movie Undisputed 2 Last Man Standing. In the latter, in addition to playing the main role, Michael was the boxing coach for his on-set partner, Scott Adkins. Y'all, heat this shit up. No sleeping, Coach. You take shower now. Go yourself. Then, the actor voiced several video games and made his debut as an executive producer in the experimental American Columbian action movie. PVC-1. The one-and-a-half-hour drama shot in one take was presented at the Cannes Film Festival, where it was nominated for the Golden Alexander Prize, but didn't become widely famous. At the same time, Michael played one of the lead characters in the comedy drama Why Did I Get Married, about a group of friends trying to cope with family problems. Could you lay off of that for a while? Could you go to hell for a while? 
already there. Excuse me? Nothing. In the next few years, White actively starred in very successful films. For example, in the neo-noir thriller The Dark Knight in 2008, with Christian Bale and Morgan Freeman, the actor appeared before the audience as a cruel criminal boss named Gamble. Enough from the clown! Let's not blow this out of proportion. You think you could steal from us and just walk away? Yeah. I'm putting the word out. 500 grand for this clown dead, a million alive, so I can teach him some manners first. In addition, the actor appeared in the TV series House of Pain and The Legend of Bruce Lee, as well as the comedy thriller Black Dynamite. Another of White's productions was released, the sports action Blood and Bone in 2009, where he played the main character. This film wasn't appreciated by film critics but received positive reviews due to competently staged fights. In 2010, the actor starred in music videos made by Tony Braxton and Nicki Minaj. His voice was heard in the animated series The Boondocks. And he played Major Jackson Briggs, a character from the Mortal Kombat universe. In this role, he appeared in the short film Mortal Kombat Rebirth and the TV series Mortal Kombat Legacy. White also played in the continuation of the story about the adventures of married couples Why Did I Get Married Too? and later in the spin-off series For Better or Worse. A year later, Michael Jai White's voice could be heard in the animated series Batman the Brave and the Bold, while he could be seen in the Canadian action movie Tactical Force and the sports drama Never Back Down to the Beatdown, which was also his directorial debut. My deal is I teach you, you pay me in blood, sweat, and money. I don't teach you what you want, I teach you what you need. And I never teach any two people the same way. A few years later, the third part was released, but these low-budget action films didn't reach the bar of the original 2008 movie. While our hero was mastering new facets of cinema, his marriage fell apart. In 2011, he and Courtney divorced. According to rumors, this happened because of Michael's affair on the side with TV presenter Claudia Jordan. In the next few years, the actor worked in films We the Party, Freaky Deaky, The Philly Kid, Android Cop, Falcon Rising, Skin Trade, the TV series Metal Hurlant Chronicles, and Black Dynamite, the animated series, in which he was also a screenwriter. Meanwhile, in 2013, Michael received his eighth black belt from mentor and legendary undefeated kickboxing champion Bill Wallace. In addition, the actor has black belts in the following martial arts, Shotokan Karate, Taekwondo, Okinawan Kabudo, Koju Ryu, Tangsudo, Wushu, and Kyokushin Karate. In 2014, White was recognized by Black Belt Magazine as the Person of the Year, and a year later, he was inducted into the International Sports Hall of Fame. By the way, thanks to working with masters of martial arts and starring in Asian action films, the actor can speak a little Japanese and Chinese. In July 2015, Michael remarried, this time to actress Jillian Ileana Waters. Interestingly, they knew each other from their youth, having met at one of the parties and even dated for less than a year in the 90s but broke up. They maintained friendly relations and, years later, decided to get back together. The time when Michael first confessed his love to her is pretty interesting as well. One day he took a sleeping pill, but he had an allergic reaction, so Michael decided that he was dying and had to confess his feelings for Jillian before he died. She was in shock, but fortunately everything went well. Their wedding took place in Thailand, and it was officiated by a Buddhist monk and martial arts star, Tony Ja. Jillian has two daughters from previous relationships, and given his own children from previous and fleeting relationships, Michael jokes that sometimes he needs time to remember how many offspring he has. Meanwhile, White added the following movies to his filmography. Chocolate City, Echo Effect, Vigilante Diaries, The Crooked Man, SWAT, Under Siege, Ancient Man, The Hard Way, Triple Threat, and the action movie with Mel Gibson, Dragged Across Concrete. The actor also starred in the TV series Insecure and Arrow. Among the works of recent years, the highlights would be the series Black-ish and The Family Business. 
as well as the films Send It, Rogue Hostage, Black Friday, and Welcome to Sudden Death. The latter is a remake of the popular action movie from 1995, Sudden Death, with Jean-Claude Van Damme and Michael's wife Gillian White starred in it. Unlike the original, the comedic interpretation of the original script received mostly negative reviews, but still became one of the most viewed films on Netflix. The actor can also be seen in Busta Rhymes and Mariah Carey's music video, Where I Belong. Today, the artist continues to develop his film career. In 2022, he added the eight-part musical drama Kingdom Business and the horror film Dead Zone to his filmography. Another premiere of the year was the action movie The Commando, starring Michael Jai White and Mickey Rourke. Both actors were also the producers of the film. Says you and me now. Are you listening to me? Let's make a deal. Right now, several of White's projects are in the works. Michael Jai White's net worth is estimated at $5 million. Together with his wife and daughters, he lives in Los Angeles in the Sherman Oaks area. He can work out in the yard of his own house, but he also often goes to a fitness club nearby. His other favorite places to work out are the beach in the Santa Monica area and a park in North Hollywood. In his workouts, Michael adds exercises to develop flexibility and dexterity to look good on screen. About two weeks before filming, he begins to work out even harder, four hours a day, and adhere to a special diet. The actor claims it's very important to drink a lot and follows the rules 70% of the plate is protein, a minimum of salt, and no sweets. But this mode is not permanent. For many years, the actor taught martial arts in the nearby town of Burbank. A karate school in his name was also opened there, where he holds master classes from time to time. White also announced plans to open a film studio in New Haven, Connecticut. The basis of our hero's filmography is action films, but there are also comedies. And what movie with Michael's participation do you like? Let's get it over with. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.